Hello everyone and welcome to this month's episode of Colloquy the Catalyst podcast. So um for this part time as a part of Macabre I am going to be sharing a story that I've written. It's called Unreal Realities. Um Unreal Realities is basically just about a young girl who was diagnosed with schizophrenia and the stress caused by that has actually led to her parents splitting up and her father left. So the story is the the main part of it is is takes place 9 years after the young girl's first episode when she has has another one and the story is basically it's just about what happens. So I hope that all of you enjoy it. Open up, sweetie, said my mother pleadingly. You have to eat your medicine, sweetheart. My upper lip curled in revulsion at the thought of swallowing the pale yellow liquid that in my 8-year-old mind tasted like ash. But mommy, it tastes like a rotten worm. My mother groaned softly. Just one more lemon pie and see, it's the small spoon today. I observed the spoon distrustfully, trying to discern whether it was indeed small or not. I looked into mommy's brilliant blue eyes and carefully opened my mouth. She smiled that warm smile that made me feel every bit of the princess my father claimed I was and raised the wild tasting toxic concoction to my mouth. I swallowed and cringed immediately after. "Mummy," I said softly. "Yes, lemon pie." "Mummy, when is daddy going to be back?" She looked at me with a doleful expression on her face. She sighed and then said sadly, "Sweet her daddy had to leave. Where did he go?" For a business meeting, darling, he went to Vegas. I looked at her hopefully. He will get chocolate when chocolates when he gets when he comes back, right? And candy, the sweet one that makes you feel cold when you eat it. Mummy laughed and nodded, then tucked me gently into bed, softly stroking my bright red hair and singing the Irish hymns she learned from her mother. It was to that sweet song that I fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, Mr. Sun glared at me. one orange eye from his lofty position in the sky above my window i smiled at him and then went to brush my teeth like mummy always tells me to as i applied toothpaste to the brush i heard a whisper alison said the voice i looked around and wondered wondered where it was coming from mummy i asked softly a soft laugh sounded it sounded like it came from all directions alison it's me mickey Put down the brush, Alison. Your teeth are clean. Mickey, who's Mickey? Your new friend. Mommy sent me to tell you a secret," said the voice softly. My fear instantly abated when I heard that Mommy had sent him a secret. What is it? I asked eagerly, instantly curious. A sinister laugh reverberated all around the room, and the voice said gleefully, "Your mommy told me she wants me to tell you she wants to run up beyond you to run away from you." quickly run away but where would i go i asked mickey puzzled after all mommy mommy always said never to leave the house without her stupid girl screeched the voice she doesn't care where you run she just wants you to leave she said she would be very upset if you didn't my lower lip quivered at the sudden harshness in mickey's voice i don't want mommy to be upset i said softly and then began hurrying down the stairs. Alison in mummy's mellifluous voice from the kitchen. "Good morning, sweetheart. Where are you headed to, so early?" I looked at her, perplexed. "Mickey said you wanted me to run," I responded. "Mickey?" asked mummy, a worried expression on her face. All of a sudden, a dark shadow hovered in front of mummy. It had blood-red eyes and long, spindly limbs that stretched out its back like a spider's legs. It bared its teeth at me and hissed. Alison screeched in an ominous voice. I screamed and attempted to bolt out the front door, scrambling to get away from the monster. Alison, I heard Mummy yell frantically. Lemon pie, what's wrong? Why are you screaming, baby? Come on, sweetheart, get away from the door. Mummy, I sobbed softly, curling up into a ball. Terror froze my limbs and I began to shiver at the sudden cold. Mummy, the monster! I felt mommy's soft warm arms encircle me, pulling me towards her and kissing my forehead. What monster lemon pie? I looked at her, astounded. Did she not see the hideous creature before her? I looked up and pointed. 
only to see nothing. I frowned, confused. The monster was gone. Then Mickey's voice came again. Run, Allison, run. They're coming for you. For you. Take your mommy and run. I stood, grabbing mommy's hand and pulling her towards the door. A despotic laugh sounded, and I realized with horror that the hand I held wasn't mommy's, but the monster's. I screamed and let go, searching frantically for mommy, screaming her name. The monster kept laughing. I could hear Mickey shouting at me to run, to take mommy and flee, but mommy wasn't there. I thrashed and yelled, but no one heard. Amidst the darkness, the monster's darkness, I saw white coats. I heard a man's voice mumbling, schizophrenia, he said softly. And then Mickey was telling me to run again. But I couldn't run, not yet, not without finding mummy. The monster had disappeared, but he had left his black shroud behind him. The man with the white coat was coming towards me. I saw a needle. An orange liquid filled the syringe. Run, Allison, urged Mickey. Don't let him touch you. He's trying to put you to sleep so you never see mummy again. I yelped and backed away, but the man kept coming. The voices never ceased. And then I felt sharp pain in my arm before darkness enveloped me. I stand before the window of my room, looking out, but seeing nothing. Instead, I'm lost in the memories of what happened nine years ago. That day changed everything. The doctor said I had schizophrenia, and as I grew, it would get worse. They were right. The voices follow me everywhere. Ghosts that haunt me when I bury my head in my pillow. That trail behind me when I walk. Shadows that appear even without the sun. Daddy came back from Vegas. He brought my sweets. When Mickey said if I ate them, the monster would be back so I didn't. Mickey's my friend, my only friend. He never leaves, not even when my other ghosts tell him to. When the voices grew and when my condition worsened, mommy and daddy started arguing even more. They fought, vituperating each other until daddy got in his car one day and never came back. Mommy is my other best friend. Her love for me is indelible, untainted by the shadows that shroud my world. Her voice, my only anchor to reality, when the rest of the universe seems to shift and blur. I turn around when my bed rattles. It keeps moving back and forth until a head emerges from beneath it. A grimy, hairless skull is visible. I stare in horror as a satanic creature emerges. It has enormous eyes sunken into a pink face and its body resembles that of a mutilated spider. It creeps out the door and down the stairs as I stare at it, frozen. Don't let it get away, Allison, warns Mickey. It's going from your mummy. I scream and bound after it, finding it crushing mummy in the kitchen. Rage blinds me as I grab a knife from the kitchen drawer and begin stabbing at it furiously. It scrambles away from me, screaming for me to stop. I ignore the creature's pleas. It hurts mummy. I will hurt it. I feel Mickey's hand on my shoulder. Ali, stop! He screams. I finally stop stabbing the demon and find my hand stained red. I stare in horror at the gaping wounds in my mother's body. My heart thuds loudly and I gasp, flinging the knife away. Mommy! Mommy! I sob as realization hits me. There was no demon. I had attacked mommy. I had stabbed mommy. No, no, she was fine. But she wasn't. Ali, sweetheart, she wheezes out as blood gushes from her stomach, a never-ending river of crimson. Lemon, why are you crying? Mommy, I say again, over and over. Mickey tells me to call an ambulance, so I do. There are sirens and lights, but they don't matter. Nothing matters but Mommy. She isn't moving her eyes, her beautiful blue eyes. They're open. Why isn't she blinking? She's dead, says a voice. A dark, sinister voice. Lies, I tell myself. The voice is lying, it's not real. I say that over and over. It's not real. It can't be. You killed her, says another voice. Stabbed her to death. Lies. You killed mommy because you're insane. Because you have no control. It's all your fault. I scream and drop to my knees. I want it to stop. I need it to stop. A doctor in a white coat appears, injecting me with something that sends me into oblivion. The rain is relentless, 
I hear it thrumming on the metal roof and running down over the broken pipe into the mud, and I moisten my cracked lips with my tongue. I wonder if they'll ever bring me food and water. I wonder if they're coming at all. I had awoken some time ago. It may have been days or it may have been hours. When I opened my eyes, I found myself strapped to a metal table. A nurse stood above me. Her rosy lips curved into a smile as she welcomed me to a mental institution. I hadn't cared. I'd asked for mummy and the nurse had left, saying she was going to get her. But she still wasn't back. Allison, says Mickey softly. I don't respond. I want mummy. Allison, she isn't going to come back, he says gently. I ignore him. She will come back. She has to. Mummy's here. She's always here. But then you killed her, said a menacing voice. No, I think to myself. I'd killed the demon. I had saved mummy. She's all right. She has to be. But the blood. No, I think. The blood hadn't been real. It couldn't be. If you didn't want the blood to be real, then you shouldn't have stabbed your mother, roars the voice. Why won't the voice stop? Mummy always makes the voice stop. Why isn't mummy coming back? You have to find her, Ali, says Mickey softly. Yes, I would go find mommy. The straps are cheap metal, just tug on them, Mickey advises. I tug, slowly, but then I start pulling harder. The metal groans and comes free. I leap up and walk to the window. Mickey tells me how to go get through the shattered glass. As soon as I leap out of the white room, its floors carved with dirt, my realities begin to blur. The world fuzzes and the voices begin to scream inside my head. Run, Allison, screams Mickey. I can't run. The noise is just too much. Fear pervades every one of my senses, forcing me to move. I stumble blindly down an alley, or maybe it's a road. I can't tell anymore. There are too many demons. I have to escape. Then a hand forces me against the wall. My vision blurs yet sharpens as I make out the grubby features of a man. His dull, mousy brown hair and his baleful smile exposes repugnant teeth that are brown instead of white. The man sneers at me and the voices get louder. Allison, get away, screams Mickey. Get away now! No, I think. No, I have to find Mummy. Do you know where Mummy is? I ask the man. He sneers at me, his mainly clear unsettling me as much as the voices that whisper in my ear. Murderer. Run, little darling, we're coming for you. You killed mommy, we will kill you. They repeat these phrases over and over till they chant them in my head. The man laughs and, an, and I feel an excruciating pain for me in my body. body. The man is mumbling something. I can't make it out. The voices keep murmuring. I feel as though I'm drowning and I can't remember how to swim. Something falls to the ground. I think it's a belt, but I can't be sure. There's moaning, or maybe that's screaming. The pain is worsening. The voices shout louder. Distantly, I hear Mickey trying to tell me something. I can't hear him. I start screaming, begging for it to stop. I feel my body th thudding on the pavement and hear the sounds of rapidly receding footsteps. Mommy, I need mommy. I lift my hands to cup my head and I feel a familiar wetness on them. Blood, I think in repulsion. The voices increase, fueled by my blood. I want mommy. I need mommy. Mickey is stopped talking. I can't comprehend what he's saying. I need the pain to stop. I want the voices to go away. Something touches my foot and it begins to throb. I look down, making out the shape of a rat. A rat that is feasting on my flesh. I scream, stumbling away. More blood pours out. The voices get louder. But then I hear Mickey. Run, Ali, he says softly. Get help, you're near a street. I stumble forward as the voices get louder, drowning Mickey out. Tires screech, headlights flash, my head splitting. Every part of my body sends pangs of agony burning through it. I fall to my knees, unable to continue. Mommy, I whisper softly as I curl into a ball, images fluttering through my shadowed reality. Pools of blood, spider demons, daddy going away, mommy not blinking. The grubby face of the man in the street. I start howling, clawing at my eyes, trying to make it stop. The car door opens, or maybe that's in my imagination. 
A demon takes hold of my, of my arms. I struggle against it, but the hand doesn't let me move. I can't breathe. I want mummy. Where was mummy? The demon is murmuring softly, but I'm locked out. I can't bear its malicious voice. It's not a demon, Alison, says Mickey. I frown. It's a demon. I know it's a demon. I can see it. But then, my world clears. I can see the sky. An endless shroud of wrinkled black, dotted with a soft twinkle of shimmering white stars. It's been so long since I've seen a darkness that doesn't frighten me. My stomach is throbbing incessantly. White, hot whips of agony are shooting through my body, and I dimly realize that the car had probably hit me. It doesn't matter. I can look around now, see the world as a photograph that isn't hidden beneath a hazy red veil, that isn't tainted by the doubt of what's real and what's not. I can hear the sirens once more, but I know they can't do anything to help me. I feel ecstasy flooding me. I can finally go find mommy, I think softly. And maybe when I do, the sky won't be a reality that only I can see. Bye bye, Alison, said Mickey softly. I smile. Bye, Mickey, I say, and close my eyes and let that comforting cocoon of darkness.